What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, we are going to go over what might be the best coding interview question that the world has ever known. This is a question that I find phenomenal. It's got lots of cool things about it. I'm very curious to see what you all think about it. You might be surprised when you first hear the question. You might have a weird first reaction to it. But just to give you a little bit of background on the question, I discovered it a few weeks ago when I was talking to Ryan. Ryan is the creator of ML Expert on Algo Expert. By the way, if you're a software engineer preparing for technical interviews, do check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, CLEM for a discount on the platform. But so Ryan has been working as the VP of technology at a startup called Semantic Health for the past year or so. And he's been in charge of a lot of tech hiring. He's conducted tons of interviews for all sorts of roles, and his go go-to question is the question that I'm about to share with you. Now, this is not a question that he only reserves for ML-related roles. No, he gives this question to front-end engineers, back-end engineers, all sorts of engineers. And to be honest, I think that it's actually more interesting for non-ML folks than for ML folks. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the question. I'm going to give it to you as if we were in an interview and I were conducting the interview, and I want to see what your initial reaction is. So here's the question. I want you to write a function that takes in two matrices and that multiplies them together and returns the output. In other words, I want you to write a function that performs matrix multiplication. Now, take a couple of seconds to just internalize the question, see how you react to it. Let me know in the comments below maybe what your initial reaction is. If you're anything like me, then the very first thing that came into your mind was, holy shit, I totally forgot how to do matrix multiplication. Then if you're anything like me, again, the second thing that came into your mind was, oh my god, this is so embarrassing, I was a math major, I should know how to multiply two matrices. Then if you're anything like me, again, the third thing that came into your mind was, okay, I'm not gonna panic, I'm gonna calm down, and I'm gonna tell my interviewer, be honest with them, and use communication to my advantage, and tell them, listen, it's been three decades since I've performed matrix multiplication, I do not know how to do it. Could you please remind me how to multiply two matrices together? Now, this is where the question gets really interesting. The interviewer is going to tell you, oh, no worries. You can just use Google to figure it out. <laughs> this is amazing. What kind of genius came up with this question? Well, I guess Ryan came up with it. Okay, maybe I'm overhyping this question a tiny bit, but let me explain why to me this was like mind blown moment and why I think that this question is really, really, really cool. And by the way here, I'm going to put my own sort of interpretation of this question. This might not be exactly how Ryan feels about it. So you know, if you disagree or something, disagree with me, not necessarily Ryan. At this point, I'm speaking for myself. But so why I find this so cool is that, first of all, before we even jump into the whole Googling how to do matrix multiplication thing, it assesses how a candidate deals with a very stressful and unfamiliar situation. Because the truth is, most software engineers, especially non-ML folks, this is why I said I think it's even more cool of a question for non-ML engineers, most non-ML engineers will likely not know or remember how to do matrix multiplication. At least that would be my guess, maybe I'm wrong. But so most of them will immediately be taken aback by the question. They'll be like, oh my God, why am I being asked this? Oh my God, I don't know how to do this. Like, this is bad, right? Panic, panic, panic. But there's no reason to panic. Like if you're on the job and you're given something that you don't know how to do, you shouldn't panic. So that's step one. It's really cool that it assesses how a candidate deals with that sort of panic. And, you know, do they ask the interviewer or tell them, listen, I don't know how to do this. You know, I need a hand, otherwise we're not going to go anywhere. That's actually a good thing if you ask that. And then the second thing is the Googling thing, right? On the job, you will almost every single day have to Google things. And many times you will have to Google things similar to Matrix multiplication, you know, not just, oh, you know, let me go look at the documentation for this native function in my programming language. No, a lot of times you're gonna have to look up, how do I perform this, you know, pretty complicated uh, concept? 
Like for example, on Algo Expert a year ago, we started doing a lot of A-B testing and we created our own in-house A-B testing system because we like the Google mindset of recreate everything, why not? And so we had to Google a few things on like, how do you run A-B testing experiments? How do you measure whether an A-B testing experiment is successful or not? And these were things kind of comparable to matrix multiplication. We had to grok these unfamiliar concepts on the job. And so here you are assessing how a candidate is able to look up and then grok a relatively complex concept like matrix multiplication, you know, in a stressful situation. And matrix multiplication is the perfect candidate for this, in my opinion, because it's not too complicated, right? Ultimately, to multiply two matrices, I think you're just, you know, multiplying like columns by rows. I forget the exact, you know, details, but that's what you're doing, right? That's not too difficult. Anybody who's a competent software engineer can grok that. But at the same time, it's not trivial. Like it's not super duper easy. So it's a good balance to see how the candidate is able to do that. They should be able to grok matrix multiplication on the spot, but it's not gonna be you know, the easiest task. And then this question is again, really cool because once the candidate has grokked matrix multiplication, there suddenly is a ton of room for edge case handling because matrix multiplication has a lot of edge cases that you have to take into account. Like, can you be given two matrices that cannot be multiplied together because they have different you know, dimensions, like the, the, the number of rows is not equal to the number of columns or something like that. Um, what do you return in those cases? Uh, can the matrices have uh, things other than integers inside of them, like floating point numbers, or can they have you know invalid input? How big can the matrices be? There are all these edge cases to ask clarifying questions about, which is yet another good signal for a coding interview question. And then when the time comes to actually implement the solution, it is a very interesting question. It reminds me of reversing a linked list, no joke, in the sense that the algorithm behind it, behind matrix multiplication, isn't too difficult. Like ultimately, I'm pretty sure you're just doing like three, four loops, but it's not trivial to implement. Like it's it's relatively complex in the sense that you have to, you know, be able to handle like which, you know, indices you're iterating through in what way, you know, you're, you're going through the columns of one matrix and the, the rows of another, like it's non-trivial. It's not super difficult, but it's non-trivial. So it's a good way for you, the interviewee, to prove your mastery of fundamental programming concepts by being able to implement this solution or transcribe the algorithm and logic that you just read on Wikipedia into a working code solution. And then finally, the other thing that's really interesting about this question is that once the candidate has completed it, you can actually go one step further if there's still time by asking the candidate how they would rewrite their algorithm if they were told that the two matrices are gonna be sparse. Sparse meaning that the majority of the elements in the two matrices are gonna be equal to zero. This actually introduces room for optimizations in the algorithm. And this might be a little bit more relevant to ML folks who might be familiar with sparse matrices, but it's still an interesting question for non-ML folks. And so that's why all in all, I just find this question really cool, like a breath of fresh air, not too difficult, not too easy with some really cool twists to it. And I think that many tech companies should use this question in their interviews, or maybe not this one now that I've talked about it, but one that's similar to it. By the way, if you wanna try tackling this question yourself, we have it available for free on ML Expert. I'll put the link to it in the description below. It's a question called sparse matrix multiplication. So you can try to code it out right there on the platform and run it against our test cases to see if it works. I would try doing the question, forgetting about the sparseness of the matrices at first, and don't hesitate to use Google and to use the internet if you need to know how matrix multiplication works. I think it's a really cool question. Let me know what you all think about the question. I'm very curious to hear your initial reaction. Like imagine you had been asked that in an interview, what are the first two things that come to your mind? And then what do you think about it now that I've given you my sort of in-depth analysis? Let me know, smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the video with anybody who you think might enjoy it. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures and I will see you 
in the next video.